Good evening, everybody. So happy for you all to come. I'm still going to be letting some people in as um, as the night goes on. Um, I'm probably going to actually disable the waiting room so that we can just all join whenever. <laughs> um, so welcome to the 2020-2021 National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. Dr. Charles E. Brim Medical Arts High School started the chapter of National Honor Society in 1998. To date, we have inducted 318 members. Some history about NHS is NH National Honor Society is a national organization to, to re recognize individual student academic achievement. The national chapter was founded in 1921 by Principal Edward S. Renierson. It grew into roughly 1,000 chapters by 1930. Over 1 million students participate in NHS or NJHS, which is the junior one that's done in middle school from all around the country. NHS chapters have also been found in Puerto Rico, Canada, and Asia. National Honor Society also holds a scholarship. So since 1946, the National Honor Society has given out more than 17 million in scholarship grants. There's only one national winner who gets a $25,000 scholarship. There's 24 national finalists, they get 56.25. 575 national semifinalists receive $3,200 in scholarship. And the total scholarships awarded are 600 and they contribute to about $2 million. Some honorable members who have been in National Honor Society, Meryl Streep, John Stewart, Fred Rogers, Michelle Obama, sure. Tina Fey, Debbie Turner, Cindy Crawford, and Jerome Bettis. So now I would like to introduce our National Honor Society president, Emily Fernandez. Thank you, Ms. Abram. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and being inducted as new members of our NHS chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you too are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest largest and most prestigious student organization program. Our chapter is proud to have been inducting new members since 1998, and today's ceremony indicates that continuing emphasis on excellence that we present for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students. In addition to the strong academic records, which which establish the eligibility for members. Our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations, <clears throat> and we serve our school and community through many activities. We are proud of, the, of these accomplishments, and we welcome these new members who bring new energy and support for our, for our continuing work as NHS members. Despite having these, despite having these, trying times this year with COVID, our chapter was still able to hold a Thanksgiving basket drive where we were able to provide full Thanksgiving meals to 15 families at Brim. We had various donations from Wolf Love Rescue, our NHS members, family members of our staff, Brim staff, including Mrs. Luke and Mrs. Wallingberg, the junior class and their advisors, as well as many outside members of the community and in connection with our Child Hounds program at Brim. So thank you to everybody who donated. We could not have done it without you. Also, thank you to our members that were able to come out and help with our baskets for the families. Lastly, thank you to Ms. Wallenberg for the beautiful bows that we were able to use for decorations on our baskets. We appreciate each and every one of you. At this time, we proclaim to all the attendants 
that membership in the in the Dr. Charles E. Brim Medical Arts High School chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by each of these candidates through the effective demonstration of our four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of our chapter will now review these qualities for the candidates. We will watch some clips describing each of these characters by some of our current members. Scholarship is a commitment to learn and growing on both a personal and educational path that stems from a desire to contribute to the world in a positive way. Service, one of the four qualities in our candidates. Service is seeking out and engaging in meaningful service voluntarily, not simply doing acts of service to fulfill a school, district, or program requirement or to collect hours. Leadership, one of the four qualities in our candidates. Leadership is carrying oneself with dignity and taking ownership and responsibility for one's own actions and participation. Character, one of the four qualities in our candidates. Character is valuing diverse cultures and building relationships that reflect love of self but also concern for others. It is about personal commitment to ethical and compassionate decision making that affect oneself and others. Character. It is my pleasure today to introduce our keynote speaker, Jasper DeShilds. Born and raised in Camden, Jasper grew up in Albert Village and is a graduate of Due Seasons Elementary School. Under the guidance and direction of his loving mother, who he credits as being his biggest influence in life, Jasper sought to, to further challenge himself by enrolling at Dr. Charles E. Brim Medical Arts High School. During his four years at Brim, Jasper excellence excelled his studies and upon graduating in 2016, was accepted to Rutgers, New Brunswick. Four short years after, Jasper graduated with a bachelor's degree in exercise science. Today, Jasper balances his pursuit of post-baccalaureate certification in population health with his personal training business called Checked In Fitness and his thriving network marketing venture. Please join me with a warming welcome, our 2021 NHS Introduction Ceremony keynote speaker, Mr. Jasper Deshiles. Hello, 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 hello. How's everybody doing today? Can you drop a one in the chat if you can see and hear me clearly? Can we get a one in the chat if everybody can see and hear me, hear me clearly? I wanna make sure. Are y'all good? First off, how's everybody doing today? My name is Jasper DeShields. I am a former graduate, like she said, of Brim Medical Arts. I was once in your position. I remember, I remember my sophomore year, I think the rule used to be, I don't remember, but I remember we had, we were in school and Kyla's actually right here with me. And I had all my Brim, fellow Brim students and we um, had our ceremony. We thought like that was the moment like we knew when we got inducted in the ceremony for national honor society that we was going to go to college we was going to figure everything out that we was going to literally just basically fulfill our dreams that's what we all knew at that moment we did everything we could leading up to now to put us in a position to fulfill our dreams so i want to first say congratulations to you all congratulations to all of you guys on the phone congratulations to you for making it this far and getting inducted into this organization because like she said there's only 318 members and it's a very prestigious opportunity so I want to give everybody a chance to drop a one word telling me exactly how you're feeling today and how does it feel to be a part of this National Army Society. Let's see you in the chat. Mm -hmm. All right, good, 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 good. One word, one word, one word. One word, great, 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 great. Proud, okay, that's good, that's good. That's how you're supposed to feel. That's how you're supposed to feel. Good, 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 good. And I'm sorry this couldn't be in person. I'm sorry this couldn't be in person. I would have loved for it to be, but you know, Corona. Corona got to us all and we all got to adjust and adapt, basically. 
So I'm gonna start this off. I'm gonna start from basically when I got to Rutgers, all right? I went to Brim. We've all went through that journey together. So I'm gonna talk basically about from when I was able to leave Brim and go to Rutgers, New Brunswick. So I'm gonna tell you what I thought was gonna happen and what actually happened, all right? We got through it. I'm gonna be completely honest with everybody. We got through it. We got through the beginning of the glitz and glam. I'm gonna be honest about the college experience because I wanna make sure that I'm on here to equip you guys, all right? So here we go. I got the Rutgers. I graduated from Brim almost at the top of my class. I was getting straight A's. I was getting through school. Everything was great. I thought I was just top of top of the world. And, and I also mentioned I had the I wanted to be I want to be a surgeon. I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Leaving Brim, I wanted to be a brain surgeon. So I went to EOF, the summer program for my school. I thought everything was cool. I had the same exact habits that I had in high school. I brought to college. And I pretty much struggled throughout the entire EOF program. And I struggled throughout the entire first two years of my school. And I was a top tier student at Brent. I was doing a lot of things outside of school. I was volunteering at hospitals. I was doing programs. I was doing whatever I could to be ready for college, basically. And I still got to college and was not ready because it's not as simple as the person you are today is not gonna be the same person you're gonna have to be when you get to that next step. So that's really one the biggest recommendation I wanted to emphasize through this story today. The keynote note is the person you are today you're gonna to have to become a different person and a better person to get to the next level, all right? I hope that makes sense to everybody. So here we go. Freshman year, I'm a bio major. Everything is great, except for the fact that I can't wake up to go to my classes. I can't wake up to go to my classes and I can't seem to figure out how to balance the workload because I came from Brim, which is a small school. And the reality of it is I went to a school that's as big as Camden City. Rutgers is a top 100 university with over 50,000 students. Where I no longer had a Ms. Pisa to talk to in class. I no longer had a Mr. Abram. I didn't have a gym teacher like Ms. Beretti who was gonna make sure that I was on top of my work. So you gotta keep that in mind that in order to get there and succeed, you're gonna have to learn the things that these teachers are teaching you now. You're gonna have to learn it for yourself and not just through them. You're gonna have to learn these things that they tell you in class and these habits they're trying to form in you and this discipline that they're trying to create for you. You're gonna to have to take that and manifest it in yourself and be able to do it every single day in college in order to get to the level we wanna be. I'm pretty sure we all have great outcomes we want from college. We all have goals, we all have things we wanna do when we get out, whether it's to be a doctor, lawyer, or even a different type of career on your own business. The one thing I would say about that, always remember, you're here to grow. You're in college to grow. You're not in college to go in there and be in the same box that you left inside of Camden. Because understand that when you leave, the world is going to get a lot bigger. The world is going to get a lot bigger and you're going to see so much and you're going to meet so many people and you're going to create these relationships that open things up. And don't be close-minded to the ideas that come to you, to the things that come to you and to the people that you meet and to the way that things are different. What we are used to is not all that is out there. All right? And I say to say now, because I was able to open up and go deeper than just the reality that I wanted to go to college and be a doctor, I now own a business. When I left college, I didn't see myself owning a business so early straight out of, I mean, when I left Brim, I didn't see myself owning a business so early straight out of college or even at any point now. I thought that when I went to college, I was going to go straight to medical school. I was going to go straight into residency. I was going to go straight into being a resident, I mean, being an um, attending doctor. And that was what it was for me. Now I own a business where I'm helping people every single day now and i'm also an independent business owner another business where i have a team where it's over 120 people under me getting mentorship in some type of way people like miss pizza with teachers and that's crazy to imagine me that people that i would look up to in another environment are now coming to me in this environment and learning from me so never sell yourself short always keep an open box stay disciplined and understand that it's your job to go in there and grow it's not your job to go in there and be a person perfect student it's not your job to go in there and be everything that you thought that you was going to be coming out of school. It's your job to go in there and be exactly what you're supposed to be. So I hope everybody appreciate that. That is the end of my speech. I hope that you all got some value out of that. I appreciate the opportunity and I believe you will be hearing from me again soon. All right. Thank you for your encouraging words. So 
At this time, we're going to begin our pinning ceremony. Uh, traditionally, if we were in person, we would be putting our NHS hoods on us. Um, since we're virtual, we are going to have um, a family member or yourself to pin the pin that you guys received yesterday. Um, so I am going to call on students individually and asking them to be ready for this. We talked about this yesterday. <laughs> um, and we are going to start with the 11th graders. So I will say, can you please just unmute yourself and say hello so that your screen will pop up at the top um, for speaking. So first up, we have Olivia Bird Carmichael. Hi. So exciting. <laughs> How about a candle? No, you don't. You're welcome. Next up, we have Kenneth Carter Jr. Kenny, can we have your camera on so we can see you? Hello. I did it. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. Next up, we have Treshawn Green. Uh, oh. Next up, we have El Denise Martinez. Okay, hi. Okay. Thank you. And our last junior we have is Lanasia Melvins. Hi. Next, we're going to do our 10th grade inductees. First up, Tanaya Avales. Thank you. Woo, <laughs> Next up, we have Jada Battle. Is she still on? Did Jada not get on? Oh. Maybe she got kicked out. Okay. Next up, we have Amira Bethea. Hi. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Next up is Alicia Chapman. <laughs> Thank you. Next up, we have Tiana Milton. Hi. Yay, T. 
Congrats, T. <laughs> Go, Tiana. <laughs> Thank you, Tiana. Next up, we have Lachey Smith. Yeah! <laughs> Hi. Right, you gotta say something. That's gonna I'm pretty sure they already heard me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lachey. And then we have Asia Russell. Uh, congratulations Hello. to all the inductees, by the way. Thank you, Asia. So next up, um, I'm going to ask Emily to come back. Now, at this time, will all inductees please unmute themselves and recite the pledge with me? I pledge to uphold the high purpose of national honor society and will retain her social service and understanding of scholarship service. I was making on the screen. And now please enjoy our virtual take on the candle lighting ceremony. Now, please welcome our school principal, Ms. McCrina, with some congratulatory congratulatory. Thank you, Emily. And first off, um, congratulations. I was telling Ms. Abram, this is definitely one of the highlights of the year for me. First and second, um, I haven't seen many of you in quite some time. You've all gotten so much bigger and I miss all of you and it's wonderful um, to see you even though it's virtually. So congratulations. This is a hard earned accomplishment. Um, your years of dedication and commitment and the countless hours that you've put into your studies have paid off. This is a very prestigious um, club to be inducted into um, and you're continuing the long standing legacy that we have here at Brim Medical Arts High School since 1998. I also want to take a minute to um, thank Mrs. Abram, who truly um, goes above and beyond, pays close attention to detail more so than than I could ever do, um, and just really, you know, does this because she cares about all of you and cares about the students and, and the goodness of her heart. Um, yesterday, I know she was driving around, um, delivering 
certificates and she met me at my dad's house Monday night so I could sign them. So she has been working around the clock. So I just wanted to thank you, uh, Ms. Abram. Thank all the students. Thank all the parents that I see on this call. I know many of you um, because this is an award for you too, for your hard work and your dedication because um, being a parent is certainly not an easy job by any means. So I'm not gonna take up any more time. It was a pleasure um, spending this evening with you. And again, congratulations. Thank you, Ms. McCreener. And now please welcome our chapter advisor, Mrs. Abram, who will be offering closing remarks to the new members. Thank you, Emily. On, be <laughs> on behalf of the NHS advisory team, I would like to congratulate all of our new NHS members. You have done incredible work thus far to achieve membership in NHS. However, I wanna challenge you to continue to work as hard, if not harder, as members. In the coming months and even years, for some of you, you will have the opportunity to show off your leadership skills as you complete service projects in the school and community. As you do, please keep these expectations in mind, expectations that this school, your advisors, and your peers will hold you accountable to. First, as a member of this chapter, you're expected to be active participants. A core value of NHS is service, and service implies action. Second, you are expected to be a leader. Effective leaders lead through example, so in all moments of your day, anticipate that someone is looking to you as a leader and be mindful of your words and actions. Finally, embody compassion and empathy. Given that service is such a large component of NHS, we challenge you to work hard towards truly understanding why our service projects are so important and so impactful to those that we help. With those expectations in mind, I look forward to working with each and every one of you in the time we have here at BRIM to be leaders for our school. Congratulations, inductees. I'd like to thank our president, Emily Fernandez, for helping me put this together our principal, Ms. McCrina, our speaker, Mr. DeShields, and members of the induction ceremony committee for their hard work in organizing this year's induction ceremony. Please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. <laughs> Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to our first ever, ever virtual ceremony. And we hope you enjoyed your time. Congrats, everyone.